multiple product breakeven analysis. If you only need to find mixes of two products that lead to a target profit, you can use a table like the two-way data table from an earlier lesson. This example calculates the total profit for two products that are cleverly named product A and product B. The contribution margin for each product is in cells D4 and D5. The fixed costs are in cell F7. I manually created the formulas for this table. You could also use Excel's data table functionality. The formula for cell C8 is in the formula bar at the top of the image. That formula is copied throughout the rest of the table. I highlighted the negative profit amounts in gray to more clearly show the break-even line for mixes of product A and product B. Life is always easier when you are solving for only one variable. In earlier lessons, we would enter assumptions in the CVP formula to arrive at a profit or set profit to zero and solve for units. Having three products in break-even analysis means solving for three contribution margins. We can solve for them as one variable by setting a constant sales mix. The next example we'll be going through is a case study of the three pigs of fairy tale fame. They have a construction company that builds three types of homes. Straw, that are temporary but functional summer homes that provide nice shade. Sticks, these are mid-priced homes that sell well in breezier locations like Kansas. Fun fact, Dodge City, Kansas is the windiest city in the United States, according to Wikipedia. And bricks, these expensive structures are sold in areas with a large wolf population, like Alaska and Wall Street. For straw homes, the price is $10,000 and the cost is $7,000, which equals a contribution margin of $3,000. The stick homes have a contribution margin of $15,000 and the brick homes have a contribution margin of $50,000. The sales mix based on the number of homes sold is 30% straw homes, 50% stick homes, and 20% brick homes. Some people may object that the housing prices in this example are completely unrealistic given current housing prices. I have two points in reply. Number one, these are very small pig-sized houses. And number two, we're talking about fairy tale pigs running a housing construction company, so cut me a little slack. We will use the assumptions from the previous slide to construct a weighted average contribution margin that's used in place of the single product contribution margin in earlier CVP and break-even calculations. Here's how the weighted average is calculated. Each product sales mix percentage is multiplied by the contribution margin for that product. The sum of those products is the weighted average contribution margin, which is $18,400 in this example. In a recent 10K filing, the three pigs disclose that their fixed costs are $552,000. I showed earlier that a quick way to calculate the break-even point is to divide the fixed costs by the contribution margin. In this example, that's $552,000 divided by $18,400, which equals 30. They need to sell 30 of these bundles to break even. Now, let's translate that to sales. This table shows the process for this. First, we calculate how many units of each product are sold in 30 bundles. We then multiply the number of units of each product by their sales price to get sales revenue. I also multiplied each product's units by its contribution margin to show that the total equals the $552,000 that we calculated earlier. The $552,000 contribution margin exactly offsets their fixed costs for a profit of zero. The pigs could use the CVP formula to model different prices and mixes of their three types of homes. They may find a price point and a mix that maximizes their profit and reduces the break-even sales. Behavioral finance studies have shown that people tend to pick the middle option when presented with three options, like the house options. The pigs may find that they can raise the price on the middle price sticks house without reducing sales of the other two products. This will increase the unit contribution margin of a stick house and this will dramatically increase profits and reduce the break-even point. Another similar behavioral finding involves restaurants, but it likely applies to many industries. They found that sales increased for an expensive item when a more expensive item was added to the menu. Say a restaurant sells hamburgers, chicken fried steak, and New York steaks. They then add an expensive filet mignon. They may now sell fewer burgers and chicken fried steak, but increase the number of New York steaks they sell. They may also sell a few of the new filet mignon option. Is this good? It depends on the contribution margin of each product. Selling pricier menu options doesn't always mean increased profits. They would want to run a CVP analysis. I'm sure our three pigs would be elated if people ate more beef and less pork. A Wall Street adage is, bulls make money, bears make money, pigs get slaughtered. That may be true, but they may not have run into a pig that can run CVP analysis. I'll combine some concepts we've covered using an example from my banking days. 
I'll explain this scenario conceptually to show how the concepts can be practically used without getting into details. Banks often offer certificate of deposit or CD accounts with very high rates when they open a new branch. It's a way for them to get people into the door to hopefully cross sell more profitable products over time. Sometimes the contribution margin on these CDs was negative. The only way I could justify these high rates was to treat them in my mind as marketing expenses masquerading as an interest expense. As I said, we hoped these customers at these branches would eventually migrate to a profitable mix like the other branches. They would have a mix of checking, savings, CDs, and other services. I could calculate the weighted average contribution for this mix. We can now calculate combinations of the weighted average contribution margins of the profitable product mix and the high yield CDs in a data table. This would show when the total contribution margin starts to exceed the high fixed costs of a new branch. If the high yield CDs have a negative margin, then the break even volume needed from the profitable product mix is higher than that of an existing branch. It takes time to cross sell new products. People slowly transfer their checking and savings balances. The data table shows the volumes at which the branch breaks even for a month or a year. A time series analysis like payback period analysis shows how long it takes until we first hit that volume and how long it takes until the total profit for the branch since inception is positive. And in case you're wondering how long it takes for a branch to break even, the answer is a long time, a very long time. Now we arrive at the hard way. Once you get beyond two products, you move beyond the virtual plane of a spreadsheet. Once you try to solve for more than one variable, for example, multiple product mixes or products with multiple contribution margins, you get into complex formulas. Some other options include scenario analysis, Monte Carlo analysis, modeling software, or using Visual Basic or macros in Excel to run multiple mixes and save a record of the results.